Hi everyone, welcome to this new session of CFA Level 2. Today we will be starting with a new reading of our derivatives curriculum which is focused on contingent claims. Now contingent claims are all about options. So this entire chapter is going to be focused on options. Now at level 2 the good thing is that the options as an entire reading it doesn't have as many detailed calculations as your first reading of forwards and futures had. In fact in the options reading that we are going to cover you only have two major parts. One is the binomial model which you already did at level 1. We will just apply it in slightly more complicated situations like a two year binomial model something like that. And aside from this you have a discussion about black scholes Merton model. Now black scholes model is something that in law syllabus throughout all of the topics which cover the black scholes model. Every single learning objective statement in your syllabus it uses the word describe and not focus on calculate. So in that model the core focus of our reading is going to be to understand what the equation is, what the assumptions are and what exactly are all the components of that equation trying to tell us. In this first part our focus will be on understanding everything there is about the binomial model. So let's start with a quick example which is pretty much same as the examples you did towards the end of your level 1 curriculum as a one period model or one period application of the binomial model. Let's look at an example. So here I have a basic example of a one period binomial model. Now the reason why this example is very important for your level 2 curriculum is well not only is this example something that you've done at your level 1 curriculum so it's not only recapping all your level 1 concepts for binomial but also you could actually get in the exam a question similar to this. So this is not just us revising something from level 1 rather this is something that could actually be tested in your level 2 curriculum as well. Now if you have a good recollection of your level 1 concepts I would suggest just pause the video give it a try see if you can solve this entire question you have to calculate the value of the call option and if you are a little rusty on level 1 concepts then you can follow now. Now the binomial method is based on a simple assumption that whatever the stock price is right now so underlying first focus of binomial model is always constructing a binomial tree on the basis of the underlying. So the underlying price is $100 right now. The binomial model says that this price can either go up or go down. There are only two possible outcomes. So I have an up move and a down move. U represents the size of up move. So if my price increases by how much will that price increase? So this will be 1.25 of my initial price. So $125. And D represents size of down move. That would be 0.8 multiplied with 100. So if the price falls, it will fall to 80. If the price increases after one year, it will increase to $125. Binomial says there are only these two possible outcomes. Size of down move at level 1. This was calculated as 1 divided by size of up move. So if my up move is 1.25, 1 divided by 1.25 will give me the 0.8 value that we have here. Once we have this constructed, there is an element of probability as well. Because in case of fixed income, we assume that the up and down move will be equally probable. But in case of options, we do not have that luxury. In case of options, we we'll have to calculate probability of up move and probability of down move. The formula for probability of up move is given as 1 plus risk free rate minus size of down move divided by up move minus size of down move. Same formula from your level 1 itself. All we have to do is just plug in all the values. So 1 plus risk free rate as 10% so 0 0.10 minus 0.8 divided by 1.25 minus 0 0.80. This will come out as 0 0.6667. 
This means that the chance of this stock price going to 125 is 66.67%. And there's a 33.33% chance that the stock will fall down in price to a value of $80. The sum of these two has to be one because if there are only two possible outcomes and we know the probability of one, the probability of other must make the sum equal to one. Now, so far we haven't introduced any sort of option because till this part, whether the, or the question says call option or put option, your process is going to be exactly same. All I've done is I've just represented the information about the underlying in a binomial tree structure. From this point on, whatever the option is in your question, if it says call option, you'll use that. If it says put option, you'll use that. Using that, we have to figure out what will be the payoff. So this was time zero. This is time one. These are values expected at time one. I want to know the payoff that we might come across after one year if we have these respective prices. Now, Wherever the information is missing, whether you are the long party or the short party, we always assume long by default. So if it just says call option, we solve it from the perspective of a long call always. Because whatever the value is for one party, whatever the gain is for the one party, it would automatically be the loss for the other party in terms of payoff. So 125. Now think logically, you have an option to buy the shares of a company at $100, that's the exercise price. When the market price is actually 125, so you are able to buy it at a $25 discount. Would you like to exercise the option? The answer is yes. So over here, we have a payoff of $25. But if the price of the share in the market is $80 and I have an option to buy it for 100, Will I actually buy it in an expensive way? No. If I actually need those shares, I might as well go and buy them in the market at a price of just 80. So in this case, I will let my option lapse, let it expire without exercising it. And over here, the payoff would be zero. Once we have these payoffs with us, we just introduce the concept of time value of money and just discount them. Now, what is the probability of getting this $25 payment? So, if I want to calculate the value, value is simply whatever money you will receive in the future. So, $25 multiplied with what is the probability of me receiving $25? It's not a 100% guarantee. There's only a 66.67% chance that I might receive it. So, multiplied with 0.6667. Multiplied with the discounting. So discounting basically says, this is that time one, I want value at time zero, I'll have to bring this back by using discounting, using risk free date. So one divided by one plus 0 0.10. So this is the discounted present value of the first node in my binomial tree. The second node is going to be zero because I'm not receiving anything. What are the chances of receiving this? 0.3333 multiplied with 1 divided by 1.10. Normally, if you can figure out from the binomial itself that one of the cash flows is zero, my suggestion would be don't even bother writing this part of the equation. In the exam, save time, directly solve this part. If you solve for this, you'll get a value of $15.15. So effectively, right now, this particular option that gives me a right to buy the shares after one year at an exercise price of $100, this is worth $15. The call option is worth $15. So I hope the entire revision makes sense and uh, all of the concepts, the example is clear. Now let's move on to slightly more complicated iterations of the binomial tree.